Okay, we're in the deep end of Watches and Wonders 2024. The Rolex videos have been made. The Tudor videos have been made. But here are some of the best watches no one seems to be talking about that you might have missed. And no, there will be absolutely no Rolex on this list. Okay, so Cartier had possibly the weirdest novelty I've ever seen with the backward Santos Dumont. So this Santos Dumont reads counterclockwise with one o'clock being at 11 o'clock and so on and so forth. They had to make a completely inverted movement for this. It's just weird. And I think I'm possibly one of the only people who really loves this. But the real standout piece for Cartier has got to be the Tortu and the return of the Tortu Mono Pusher Chronograph. These are watches I could never afford. As soon as I see the word Privé in the Cartier catalog, I know I'm out of my lane, but I'm still happy I live in a world where these exist. So there's a Mono Pusher Chronograph variation and a Time Only, all of which have Breguet hands and are available in Yellow Gold and Platinum. <sighs> I just think these are so beautiful and so Cartier. Moving on to a brand I don't talk about nearly enough, Chapek. And they have one of my favorite watches of the year with the Promenade Gold Doe. There is a 0% chance I am saying that correctly. I'm so sorry. I am not proud of what I just said. <laughs> my horrible French aside, I think this is a watch that would, one, appeal to a lot of people, and two, it's something that's just so different. It almost feels like a Moser and a Debethune had a baby. <laughs> So this has a case size of 38 millimeters, that Goldilocks zone, a thickness of 10.8 millimeters, and a lug to lug of only 42 millimeters. So a very wearable watch. This has an enamel dial with a water ripple illusion and powering this watch is the Chapak in-house caliber SXH 5.1, which is self-winding with a micro rotor and 60 hours of power reserve. <sighs> Possibly one of my favorite releases of this year. For me, Grand Seiko is often hit or miss at Watches and Wonders, but this year, 2024, they have absolutely knocked it out of the park with the Evolution 9 Birchback SLGW003. Classic Grand Seiko aesthetic, beautiful dial, titanium case, but it's the movement that steals the show here. Sometimes Grand Seiko movements aren't the prettiest to look at, like when they put a giant lion stamp on the case back. But this, yes. This is the Grand Seiko in-house 9S A4 10B manual winding movement, 10 vibrations per second, beautifully finished, and it has 80 hours of power reserve. All retailing for 10,700 USD. You can't argue with that. So this was the year of the datagraph for Alonga Unsona. I hope that pronunciation was slightly better than when I attempted French with the Chapek. And the real standout for me in ALS has got to be the new Lumen Perpetual Calendar Tourbillon Honey Gold. A little bit like the Cartier, can I afford this in my wildest dreams? Absolutely not. I don't even think they'd indulge offering me one, but I am happy I live in a world where this exists. So this unites three grand complications with the flyback chrono, a Tourbillon with stop seconds, and Perpetual Calendar. This is fine watchmaking and it looks fantastic. Okay, yes, I've been on the Namas hype train. I've been, I've been the conductor of the Namas hype train, but I'm not getting off. That's what she said. It's for good reason. Look at these. So this was Namas's first year at Watches and Wonders and their novelties just brought me so much joy. Releasing 31 new colorways of the Tonganta 38 date. I've had a few through into review and I've just got a parcel with a few more colors through. I just love the splash of color. When Rolex is releasing a big old nothing package, Namos is here like, hold my beer. So these are celebrating over 31 years of the Tonganta and over 175 years of watchmaking in glass huta. Pure happiness on the wrist. Moving out of Germany and back into Switzerland, Vacheron Constantin have had some beautiful releases this year. I'm thinking of the dreamy purple Ageri, the traditional tourbillon chronograph, and the freaking insane Berkeley Grand Complication. But I'm a sports watch lover, so I'm all juiced up over the green dial overseas. Once again, I know these are out of my league because they're all priced at price on request. Feels great. <laughs> But there's just something about pink gold and green that is forever perfect. 
My only big disappointment with this is that the size that would fit me, the 35 millimeters, has a diamond bezel. <sighs> I just hate diamonds so much. I hate them particularly on a sports watch that I want to look sporty. I get it, you know, with the ones that are marketed towards the ladies, but it would be nice if we had the option of no diamonds for the 35 millimeters. These aren't even just for ladies. I know men who have this size because it wears really nicely. The big 40 millimeter overseas wears big and the 35 millimeters wears really beautifully on a lot of wrists. So please Vacheron, give us no diamonds, please. Now the last standout brand that you might have missed is Tag. So I've been keeping a close eye on Tag Heuer because I really feel like they're about to have a comeback as they rely more on good mechanical watchmaking and less on subpar connected watches. The big new addition everyone has been talking about is the new split second Monaco, which is freaking massive, very, very cool complication. Insane price point at over 120,000 pounds though. I mean, if I had that kind of money, I'm not sure I'd be spending it on a high complication tag, but there's gotta be people out there. But the tag Hoyer that stole the show for me is the Carrera Chronograph. 39 millimeter case, great looking chronograph with pops of red, 100 meters of water resistance, just a good looking watch at the more achievable price of 6,100 pounds. But anyways, guys, those are just the standout models for me. There is probably more I should have talked about. Like Piaget released a beautiful concept tourbillon, Moser and a crazy skeletonized tourbillon, JLC and the duometer. But these are the seven that particularly struck me. I would love to know in those comments down below. What are the watches that really stood out to you? I can't wait to read them. And now let's thank the gorgeous, fabulous, amazing, wonderful Pope Tier patrons. Hi patrons, just little old me here. Now I have to say, I feel like I've been awful this week. Usually you guys get early access to everything, but Watches and Wonders is just that weird week where you're just pumping things out as fast as you can. So I'm so sorry, but my Sunday's video is gonna be with you guys very soon, early access, and I'm working on my next Nomos video, editing that today. Anyways, love you guys, you're all perfect, amazing.